Hi there, this is Mike Kramer of Mock Capital. Today is Tuesday, June 11th. It's around 5 p.m. New York time. Tomorrow will be a big day. We'll be getting the CPI report at 8.30 in the morning. Expectations are for an increase of 0.1% versus last month's reading of 0.3. X Food and Energy is looking at 0.3 versus last month's 0.3. CPI year over year is looking at 3.4% versus last month's reading of 34 X Food and Energy is looking at 3.5 versus last month's 3.6. And then at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, we're going to get the FOMC rate decision announcement. Uh, expectations are for no change in rates. Uh, we're also going to be getting the dot plot. Uh, and then we're also going to be getting the press conference at 2.30. So there's a lot of stuff going on tomorrow afternoon. Uh, obviously, uh, we'll review that in a few minutes. And then PPI, we're going to get that on Thursday. Uh, we're looking for 0.1% down from 0.5. Final demand, we're looking for 2.5 versus 2.2. Then on the 14th, we're going to get import prices. And then on Friday, we'll get University of Michigan consumer sentiment preliminary readings for the month of June. Uh, so again, lots of stuff going on uh, to finish off the rest of this week. The one thing we have uh, seen this week that's rather notable is a, a big movement and shift in, in the currency markets, especially out of Europe because of the uh, parliamentary votes that took place there over the weekend. Uh, you've seen the euro weaken rather dramatically versus the U.S. dollar. This really started on Friday with that stronger than expected employment report, uh, and it's continued through with the votes on Sunday. Uh, and now you're seeing the euro really break down materially versus the dollar. Now, tomorrow's a CPI report and FOMC rate decision announcement uh, is going to either add to the declines that we've already seen in the euro, pushing it closer to this 106 area, or could offer a, a brief sort of respite where we see the euro move back up closer to this 109 region. At this point, we've saw this one uptrend easily broken on Friday. We saw another trend uh, get gapped below on Monday. So right now, overall, the euro is looking very weak. Uh, and I would think if we were to really break below this 107 area, uh, the next major level we're really looking at is this 106 region that we were looking for for some time. And uh, it's been a long wait. So tomorrow's CPI report is going to probably have a big say in this. Because if you get a number for some reason that comes in hotter than expected, there's a really good chance that you're going to get um, the movement down. And it's not going to change the Fed rate announcement decision, whether it comes in hotter or colder. Uh, and it's probably not going to even change the dot plots very much. Uh, but again, it, it, if it comes in a tenth hotter on the headline, that could really sort of, again, push back against the market expectation that inflation is returning the target. Uh, and that would obviously be a big deal because, again, like I said, you've already seen the euro break down pretty meaningfully versus the dollar. Uh, when we look at the pound versus the dollar, it's not been as severe. Obviously, we had the move lower on Friday, but uh, you don't really have the same uh, political fallouts that you've had out of the eurozone. So right now, we're kind of looking at a pound that's hovering and holding onto this 127 region. Clearly a hotter CPI number tomorrow or something that should come in not as expected could result in the uh, pound really moving down towards 125. Expectations are fairly low, so I, I think that the real risks here are for the dollar to strengthen further, not for it to weaken. Um, you know, even with the Fed... For the most part, the market's only really looking for one rate cut this year. So there would have to really be, uh, and from listening to most Fed officials, that seems to be where I think the dots are likely to come in at. And um, if that's the case, you know, again, you're not really going to get, I think, a significant move. Uh, you're not going to, I don't think you're going to see significant weakening in the dollar. So that also sort of lends to the idea that we could see the pound moving back towards this 125 and a half area. When we look at the yen, it's uh, really kind of crept right back up to this area where there was that intervention. Uh, again, it's the same sort of setup here. We're not really clear on what the BOJ is doing at this point, although we've never really been clear. 
So again, I think the risk here is that the yen moves up to around 150, 157.70 and perhaps higher with your downside somewhere around 154.80 or so. When we swing over to the uh, U.S. Treasury market, uh, two-year rates have uh, rebounded and moved off of that 473 region following the the hotter than expected job report. They've kind of stalled out and given back some of those gains. Uh, again, depending on what happens with this inflation report and more importantly, what the Fed signals, the upper end of the range on the two years, probably somewhere around this 5% region. I kind of drew in here what looks like maybe a cup and handle pattern, which would suggest maybe we could see the two year really break out in a more meaningful way and potentially even move uh, beyond this five and a quarter region. This could actually still play out for a couple of months. Uh, but again, as long as we stay within this channel, basically between the 475 and 495, as long as we stay within the channel between, let's say, 470 and 5%, um, that really uh, kind of means that this idea of this cup and handle can stay in place. So this is something to watch for. If we were to get a break above 5%, it would probably be a good indication that the market is really leaning heavily towards the idea of the Fed raising rates at some point down the road. It's going to take a hotter than expected CPI print, though, really for that to happen. When you look at the 10-year, again, we, are, we bounced off of it uh, support. Uh, right now, it looks like resistance is somewhere in this 465, the 468 region. Really, until you break the 468 region, you're really just stuck in a zone here. So we'll just have to, again, kind of keep an eye out for what happens following the CPI report. The FTSE has been weaker. We've been talking about the FTSE and its relationship with copper. Uh, copper prices have certainly weakened some over the last uh, couple of days, but they're still much higher than where they had been. So again, this just seems to be following and trading with copper prices. Uh, so that's an easy one to keep an eye on. But here you can see is a, a support level right here at 81.40, uh, with a break of 81.40, potentially setting up a move down to 78.95. That would probably also mean that copper would be moving lower as too. Uh, we've also been seeing the DAX weakening uh, more recently. Here's a level of support right around 18,380, with the next major level of support really closer to this uh, 17,890 region. We can certainly see that the DAX has been uh, trending lower the last couple of weeks. And so this could be setting up a descending triangle, which would result in the DAX breaking down and really testing this uh, 17,900 region. When we move over to the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ's been a little uh, deceiving in that uh, we've seen, you know, again, like today, for example, NASDAQ moved higher, uh, but the Apple, Apple itself was up 7% today, which really carried most of the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P 500 on the day. If you look at the Dow, where Apple has a smaller weighting and doesn't have NVIDIA, it's a very different story. When you look at the NASDAQ, though, you can see that we're, we're kind of just moving up and along what looks like uh, a rising wedge pattern. It's possible at this point we're breaking out above it. Typically, rising wedge patterns don't break out to the upside. They typically break to the downside. Uh, but it isn't to say that that can't happen. Um, but this could be creating a throw over too, which would be a, a false breakout and it would result in a move down to the other side. I mean, clearly, if you're getting dollar strength tomorrow and you're seeing interest rates moving up, that should really be a negative for stock prices. But again, a lot of that's also going to depend upon what NVIDIA and what Apple are doing. If you start seeing those fading, that's going to be your signal that the equity market overall is fading. Uh, and so we're kind of keeping an eye on this because the gap, there's still gaps down here at 18,600 that need to be filled. When you look at the S&P 500, it has a similar sort of setup. I drew in what looks to be maybe an ending diagonal triangle here. Uh, here's our E, uh, which would re again represent, we've been co consolidating in this region. It would represent a move down to this lower bar here. Uh, and again, when we sort of also look at it from another perspective, 
uh, what I did was I took this value from here to here, and then you draw out, we're at the 1.618% extension. Uh, and this kind of fits in with this, I, the, the ending diagonal kind of fits in with the idea of this being a 1.68% extension from this move in March to the high in, uh, in July to the low in November uh, to this point here. So uh, if this is sort of an ending diagonal triangle, it does fit in with this idea that there's some sort of Fibonacci relationship between this move up and, and this move up. So that's something else to keep an eye on. When we look at the Dow, like I said, it's a much different story. You can see the Dow has been really weak. I drew in what looks like a, a bear flag or a bear pennant on the Dow. Again, you don't really have the same weightings and strengths of NVIDIA. Uh, and You don't have NVIDIA in the Dow, and you don't have the same weightings of Apple because the Dow is a price-weighted index where the S&P and NASDAQ 100 are market cap-weighted indexes, and Apple doesn't have the highest price in the Dow, so it doesn't have the biggest weighting. And so you can really see the difference here between how the markets have been uh, responding. And you can see that we clearly broke to the downside here and now we're trending lower. So again, we're kind of just keeping an eye right now on some of these levels at 38,480 uh, or so. Uh, again, the big level here in the Dow that really matters, I think the most is uh, this level right in here at at around 37,500 because if that breaks that's going to really almost confirm what looks like you know a double top pattern that's formed in here and that's really important because if this breaks that's going to really signal more trouble ahead the other one that i like to keep an eye on is the housing index if we look at the housing index that's been uh consolidating in this wedge we broke through that the other day Right now, we're also watching this big level of resistance at 666.54. Uh, it's possible that, again, if this breaks as well, you have what looks like a double top pattern in here as well. So this is something else you're going to want to keep an eye on because it's possible that this could also act as a leading index uh, for broader market movements as well. So anyway, that's all I have for you today. Uh, good luck tomorrow, and we'll talk to you again next week.